All right, campers, uh, last thing on organic, and this is one where you're going to have to put in a lot of effort, uh, probably the most effort of anything on this unit is uh, the organic reactions. Just telling you right up front, there's eight of them that are testable on the Regents exam. We've got them laid out here for you. They're on your quiz planners. There's addition, substitution, combustion, fermentation, esterification, saponification, addition polymerization, and condensation polymerization. I'm telling you flat out, get into your review book and work with it. We're going to show you a strategy to get this memorized, but you're going to have to work on memorizing this stuff. It's the only way to manage it. Probably about a half hour of effort spread across four or five days and you'll have it. Um, and I, I know I might generously uh, sprinkle some bonus points into anyone's grade who happens to follow this strategy. We're going to recommend that you make either flashcards or a, a page where you're going to memorize this stuff and drag it around with you until you get it done. If I were making a flashcard, I would probably put esterification on one side. And on the back side, I'd probably put some very specific information like the following. Esterification is the reaction between an alcohol and an organic acid to make something called an ester. Esters are very notable and famous compounds because they usually smell nice. They're used in perfumes. They're often found as the essence in fruits and things like that. And it's what we would call in a, in a biology sort of way, it's an organic uh, synthesis reaction, but it's also called a dehydration synthesis because you're synthesizing a bigger compound at the expense of taking water up. All right? So if you remember from your biology days, you could describe it as a dehydration synthesis. Now here's a specific example. This is the kind of thing you want to do on your card. Here's a specific alcohol, propanol, a specific organic acid, pentanoic acid. It's got five carbons in it. I know it's an acid because it's got the Ku group on the end looking at chart R. The functional group, COOH. The functional group here, OH. When those two molecules get together and combine into a bigger molecule, it looks like this. All right. The H falls off the acid group. The OH falls off the alcohol. Those two get together and make the water. And then the remains, the C3H7, comes in here and hooks on where the hydrogen used to be. All right, so that's the easy way, the pattern you want to see here. The alcohol carbon group attaches where the hydrogen used to be. All right, and so if we were to draw this out with structural formulas, here you see propanol with the OH on the end, pentanoic acid with the COOH on the, on the end carbon, and here you see it now kind of drawn out. The hydrogen falls off right there, and the C3H7 comes in and attaches, and you can see that the OH again off the alcohol and the H off the acid get together and form the water. Naming these, again, if you look for the pattern, the thing that came from the alcohol where the H used to be on the acid has three carbons and it's a branch, so we go prop for three carbons, YL for a branch, and then the special ending on esters is eight, and we just take the acid name, which was pentanoic, and make it pentanate. So propyl pentanate, five carbons in the acid chunk, pent, three carbons in the alcohol chunk, prop, YL, as we consider this to be a branch where the H used to be, and the main part of the molecule, five carbons. Right? You should do that for each of the, of the eight reactions. This is a sample of how you do that. Get busy. Do it for your good, and you might be able to do it for your good also with a few bonus points. Might be able to. I, I, Boy, I'm good on that.